I'm Scott Pemberton. Come check us out at Hangtown Halloween Ball. All right, you're listening to 10 Minutes With. Today we're fortunate enough to have Scott Pemberton with us. How are you doing today, man? Excellent. Good to see you up here in Portland, your hometown, huh? Yeah. What was it like growing up here, man? Oh, I love growing up in Portland. Uh, there was such an incredible... Like, well, you know, I didn't notice our music scene until I was like a teenager, but that was right as the grunge stuff was really just getting really cracking. Right. So I was able to go check out... Nirvana and Mud oh, wow. Honey and all that. So, How old were you when you were seeing them? I mean, that was, I was pretty young, thir- 13, 14. Wow. And they would, yeah, it was really exciting. It was this little underground thing, and and it was, and I was just just starting to think about guitar, and so oh, you yeah, know yeah. that that when I was fifteen, that music was so you know easy to play. Yeah. Or at least you know it was all heart and spirit. For sure. So that was my, that was really cool. So like I was able to just put together a little band and. Nice. Get out and play the same clubs. Hell yeah. Like, get to play the same club that I saw. You know, because Satyricon, where Kurt Cobain and Courtly Love met. Right. They had a new band night, and you literally could just call them. You could call them. Like, I called them from my job at Burger King. Oh, shit. And I was like, uh, yeah, I have a band. Could we come play? And uh, they're like, sure. Nice. How about, like, three weeks from now, a new band night? So. And you guys were playing the same places that Kurt Cobain yeah. was killing on. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. Yeah, cool thing cool. about Portland. It um, was cool. Let's go way back. Let's talk about your first musical memory. Okay. I mean, uh, I guess my dad, my dad would have to be my first musical memory. He was, he's a musician, although he doesn't think of himself as a musician, but... He plays? He plays, yeah, and he's, he's, he's he's a fantastic singer. He's a really, really good singer, and he would sing... And play the guitar, and banjo, and ukulele, and he would sing. Oh, hell yeah. He would sing like old doo-wop tunes and stuff, and nice. I just thought that was the absolute coolest thing ever. And I remember hearing records. We we lived in it. They they were Nazarenes, which is like a no pop music, no like no music that's not church music, and no movies or anything like that in the house. Right. Oh wow. Yeah. But he would sing that stuff himself. Oh cool. Yeah. And th- but he would not in public, not but he would for us, and that was like I got to hear Elvis, and and he was, and I remember hearing, you know, church records, and thinking, asking him if it was him, you know, just assuming that that must be nice. Yeah. So you pretty much were just at an early age. It was just music, no TV or nothing. No TV. We didn't have any TV in the <laughs> right. house, That's cool. and there was no records. Yeah. I think part of that is where my vision now with music is kind of different. Like I had these weird. I would get blurbs of music, or I would hear stuff on an ad and my imagination would have to fill in the rest oh, wow. like I would have like the little the beginning of a song or something right. kind of stuck in my head and I would just have to kind of like flush the rest out oh dope yeah and crazy. so I have all these crazy ideas of what the songs were which they weren't really nice and yeah it was an interesting I, I, I think it was pretty cool and there was a lot of music like I was my parents had me in piano when I was five which I hated <laughs> And then, and then moved into like fifth grade. It was sax. Right. And then I played that all the way till I graduated high school. Nice. Um, let's talk about your your style. I mean, how long have you had that stool? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't play with the strap majority mm-hmm. of the time. No. Your guitar is laying down. It's standing up. Mm-hmm. You're you're holding it with, against your hip. Yeah. How'd that really like come along? I mean, it's still coming along. I feel like the way that I play. I feel like music. For me, it's just like a constant life study and constant evolution. And I try to never say, this is how this should work. Right. This is how you should play the guitar. But, uh, it started really like I had a I had a, a pretty incredible life-changing accident in like 2000 and probably nine. Was it in a car accident? Yeah, I was hit by a car on my bicycle. Right. How and, old were you? Uh... I don't even know. What am I now? Almost 40. I must have been, however, whatever the math is. 30, right. 35 or something. 34. Middle-aged? Yeah, 34, I guess. And so. that, what was that? That but bad accident? It was, yeah, it was just like a, I wasn't wearing a helmet, and it left me in ICU in a coma. Oh, with, wow. With a, with a traumatic brain injury. Oh, wow. And they didn't, they really, the doctors, they, they were not sure I was going to live. Damn, it was that serious. Yeah. And, and as I was coming back, I it took a long time just because your brain takes a really long time to heal. Oh yeah. And it's never apparently it's never like it takes a long time to heal. So I wasn't able to hold more than four pounds. I think it was four pounds 
for like six months. Wow. And a guitar weighs more than four pounds. Yeah, the guitar's I couldn't play guitar for that long. Wow. And then when I started back on guitar, I was still learning, like I had to relearn to walk. And I, there was a lot of rehabilitation stuff I had to do. Right. But guitar, I could just play. Right. But when we first started playing, we were, I, I sat sometimes. Oh, cool. And that's why I had a stool. And then as I gained my strength, the stool was there, and I was my rules for playing guitar were just gone. Yeah. I didn't have any. Right. And and so I would ride the guitar really low when I was rocking, and I would raise it up really high to play jazzy. Right. And the strap would fall off my back. And then when I went low again, there'd be no strap. Wow. And I'd be battling it, and it'd come undone, and it and it'd be a hassle. And I'd get to the end of the song, I'd put it back on. Next song, guess what would happen? Yeah. Same thing. Hmm. And to where the point was, then I would start to maybe I'd get over to the stool. Right. And then I started realizing that I'd get to the end of the song and it wasn't a big deal. Like the strap is unnecessary. Extra. Right. The strap's extra. You don't need it. Hmm. And Interesting. So, and as soon as I decided, it was, I don't know, maybe three years ago, where I really just like was like, nope, I don't use a strap. Yeah. And when I really let go of the strap, I was able to go flat with the guitar. Right. And and then that spawned a whole nother set of just like almost like a new instrument right it's like learning it as a new instrument crazy yeah so that's been really cool and i feel like it's cool exciting it's and it's, it's maybe at times almost frustrating because it's like it's a new instrument right it's like no there's no history nice of like i could look at what did so-and-so do like this nobody did it yeah so. cool so i mean out of a bad accident you know comes in a way your style you know yeah. like just no strap and no one's doing that. I mean, and it just came organically, you know, unfortunate, but... Yeah, I mean, it wasn't cool. unfortunate. Life is life. Right. And it just is what it is. And it was, um... I don't know. I feel like one of the things with the with the accent was allowing me to return to beginner's mind. Nice. And remove those rules. Like, all Definitely. the rules we set up for ourselves. This is how this works. Exactly. This is how this works. Yeah. None of that existed. And I could just be like, how does this work? Free and, like, redo it. Nice. Yeah, because... I like everyone thinks when they're they're playing they're so influenced by every you know all the music they hear. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I write, I just like to blank out, you know, like mm -hmm. I've never heard anything and write, and that's pretty cool, man. Let's talk about your influences, like mm -hmm. your top couple like guitar influences. I know you teach jazz. I do. The jazz, yeah, jazz is like. I, I feel like. The nice thing with jazz, one thing with jazz, like one thing I'm attracted to with musicians I want to study and stuff is, is uh, the master, the mastery, right. like studying music beyond just like, um, almost with like the monk monk phase, you know, where you're like, you know, in order to even play jazz or become one of the well of a jazz master, it's like no joke, right? Like that stuff is no joke. Yeah. So like I really appreciate that style and I like to study music. I think I thoroughly enjoy it. It's fast. It's my meditation. So you know, nice. I mean Charlie Christian, Wes Montgomery, George Benson, his bop stuff, it just is he was the first guitarist whose stuff I physically like I was studying other guitarists, everybody's stuff with enough effort I could play it. Nice. George Benson was the first guy where I, I couldn't George Benson. I George mean Benson. you can do it now or is it just I mean, that far? Yeah, I maybe. You know, but he plays so friggin' fast and clean and crisp and just like nice. Uh, yeah, so. George Benson. George Benson. Very cool, man. Um, I know you, you play that one guitar. Like mm -hmm. most traveling musicians, they got their own. You know, they got two or three guitars. Mm -hmm. What was like the first song as a kid you wrote? Like as a kid, that was like you know, wow, this you know, this could go somewhere. The first song. Yeah. I mean, we still play it actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's person. Oh, it's cool. Person. Hell yeah. Yeah, I, I, it was the first song I wrote that I was like, "This is a song." Actually, I think I, I think I really thought of it more as a joke. It's, yeah. It's a humorous song that has depth, but uh, I, I entertained my friends with it, and then we, I revisited it like two years ago and brought it in, and nice. And it, it, it's like people really enjoy it. Hell yeah. But and it's fun full circle. The first song I wrote. Very cool, and it's and you guys is playing it to this day. Yeah, I mean, we didn't. I didn't play it for you know however long that was until like two years ago. Yeah, but it has to do with just uh, who you are, being good enough. Right. You know, and owning yourself, being yourself, being true, flying your freak flag when you need to, and that's okay. Definitely, that's the idea. Cool, man. I mean, you were named like one of the breakout artists at High Sierra. 
That's cool. What was it like, you know, this past summer, rocking High Sierra? I mean, what? It's been incredible. I mean, like, say High Sierra this year. The first year we did High Sierra was year before last. We've done it three year, three years in a row. The first year we were totally unheard of, and we were the very first band to open the festival. Right, like the, we were the, noon or something. Yeah, or one. and we opened the Big Meadow stage. Nice, the very first band of the festival. Cool, and we played with all the heart and spirit that we have, which I try to do every time I play. Right. I thought it was really cool. This time we played, we were the last band oh, hell yeah. on Big Meadow Stage. I thought that that was pretty darn exciting to be able to be like first band to last band in, you know, three festivals with one in between. That was pretty exciting. It was oh, yeah. like people responding to what we do and appreciating and joining in the fun. I mean, it was cool. It was exciting. And all the fantastic musicians I got to play with. Yeah, I know you guys did like an impromptu set mm-hmm. over there at the Vaudeville. Yeah. With some fruition guys. Yeah, we just like landed. That. Like, we just pulled in. I mean, literally pulled the bus in. And I went up on stage with Brothers Comatose. <laughs> yeah. Big shout I mean, out to like, them. Brothers yeah, Comatose. Yeah, Brothers Comatose. Broco, that was, Ben. That was super fun. Just the bus went in. And and I was off. They had a golf cart ready for me and shot me over there and got on stage and then right after that, Fruition was like, hey, come join us and we just went over there and we had a Portland Represents on Vaudeville. Hell yeah. It was really fun. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I enjoyed seeing you. I was there just kicking it. Nice. It sounded great that day. Yeah, that was fun. It was tornado mode. Hell yeah. Well, cool. I just want to thank you, Scott Pemberton. Yeah, man. 10 Minutes With, Scott Pemberton, Portland, Oregon, the Star Theater. Check him out.